stylish film noir, Otto Preminger's Whirlpool is a good example of classical Hollywood's strengths and limitations. Thematically ambitious within limits, glossy, well-written, and with a host of good actors, it tells a compelling story with panache, but stops just short of the material's full potential. Some of the intellectual trimming may result from censorship concerns, but the bigger problem is that the very ambition to create an appealing good film is what prevents it from being a great one. Jean Tierney stars as Anne Sutton, wife of successful psychoanalyst Dr. William Sutton, Richard Conti. The film begins with Anne caught shoplifting in a posh Beverly Hills department store. Desperate to avoid arrest, she is saved by the quick intercession of David Corvo, Jose Ferrar, who convinces the store management to bury the incident. Slick, charming, and practically oozing disreputability, Corvo recognizes Anne's inner turmoil and promises to help her overcome her kleptomania without the inherent stresses of psychotherapy. His self-awareness makes Corvo fascinating, and in a sense he, not Anne, is the protagonist of the story since he initiates the outlandish events. Thanks to the unpredictability of psychopathology and hypnotism, which figures heavily in Corvo's therapy, you can accept the implausible action for a while. The crucial plot twist turns on Corvo's ability to hypnotize himself, thus providing an alibi for a murder for which he frames Anne. That confusingly awkward setup is in keeping with his spider-like control, so that even when the focus shifts to Anne in the second act, he seems to hover in the background. The filmmakers avoid turning Whirlpool into an extended therapy session because Anne's problem is grounded entirely in the story, and however far-fetched, events hang together. Order is imposed on the inexplicable, irrational behavior by Dr. Sutton's psychoanalytic insight. While his explanation of Anne's kleptomania is pat and superficial, it is convincing and compelling enough in the context to rope the bizarre chain of events together, which points to the film's limitations. By avoiding the incoherence, not to mention threat, that could result from serious psychological exploration, all of the film's energy goes into tying up the plot threads and restoring emotional order in true Hollywood fashion. There isn't an imposed happy ending. Whirlpool is too sophisticated for that. Anne is not cured, just aware enough of her trauma to begin recovery, but all the potential upsets are tidied up with predictable convenience. There is plenty of compensation on the road to that self-imposed limitation. The film gives prosperous Southern California life a sexy sheen that is reminiscent of the similar New York environment in Preminger's more famous Laura. Even as the narrative escape clauses become more forced and expedient, the environment still sparkles. So, maybe we should not expect a movie to explore psychology in depth as long as the trip is smartly diverting. Accepting such a limitation at the outset, however, is what prevents a whirlpool from being more than well-honed entertainment. <laughs>